Welcome back to Diesel Dragon. We got another side in a little project right here. This is a 1980 Chevy Monza that I have personally owned for 20 years. I know exactly how long it's been sitting, which is 17 years, because I'm the one that parked it back in 2006, right before I joined the Marines. This is a very sentimental car to me. A long time ago, before I joined the Marines, I was a server at IHOP. I wasn't making hardly anything. I was broke, freaking barely, barely scraping by. And the car that I was driving at the time, the motor decided to give out. It blew up. It was done. It was just done. It was over with. I was in a very, very bad situation. I lived probably 15 miles from work. I couldn't just walk there. I had to have transportation. Otherwise, I'm going to get kicked out of my apartment. I didn't know what I was going to do. A friend called me up and he said, hey, I know you're in a bad situation. I have this old Chevy Monza that doesn't run. It's sitting in my parents' driveway and I got to get rid of it. They're making me get rid of it. You can have it. I was like, thank you. I, I, I needed this. So I go call up my dad. My dad helps me go pick this thing up. We trailer it home. I do a little diagnostics. It turns out the fuel pump was bad on it. So I go ahead and replace the fuel pump with a little clicky clacky. It was 20 bucks at the auto parts store, give or take. I put that fuel pump in, starts right up. I got me a car. Now, I'm not gonna say this was a reliable car. It definitely, it definitely uh, gave me a lot of trouble through the years, but it got me out of that bad situation. It got me back to work. It got money back in my pocket and I wasn't gonna get kicked out of my apartment. Now, unfortunately, when I joined the Marines, I couldn't bring it with me. So I got parked at my dad's place and it has been sitting there for the past 17 years until I recently went and picked it up and put it right here in this spot for this video to get it back running. We are gonna get it started and hear that engine at least one more time. So let's get started. So I'm going to start from the back back here. And if you know anything about Chevrolet Monzas, a lot of people don't. A lot of y'all know, probably never even heard of a Chevrolet Monza. But if you do, you know that these are not the right tail lights. So I had the uh, lenses on both tail lights crack on me, and I was not able to get it inspected. I don't remember if it was eBay or somebody local or what, but they said, hey, these tail lights fit a 1980 Chevrolet Monza. I was like, all right, give them to me. We gave them money, come back, and <laughs> they, they were not the right tail lights. But it's what I had. I've already spent all my money. I made them work. I did some cutting, got them in there. You see the big holes on the side, on each side. But that passed inspection. That's all I really needed to, to do. So, let's kind of do a walk around here. You see, this is all from sitting. This back in 2006, this was all real nice. But after sitting for so long, it it's taking its toll. We got some tree limbs growing in. You see rust all along back there, and then it gets really bad right here. You can actually see inside. Those emblems have fallen off. Those were still on there back in 2006. Some really bad rust right here. And if you notice this hood has hood pins, there's no latch on it at all. On more than one occasion that has burnt me, as you can see up here. Forget to put the hood pins on, take off down the road and whap. Lights falling out over there. I can fix that. Some more. Rust on the A pillar. Got a lot of rust down here on the bottom of the door. All the way across on the rocker panels. The gas cap that there was actually a uh, a vinyl piece that went over this and that's all rotted away. This has been here ever since I owned the car. 
Let's check out the inside. All right, that that is pretty rough. I think those were uh, Marine Corps posters, recruiting posters that the recruiter gave me. I think I threw them in here and they just kind of rotted away. So the dash is covered in mold. It's actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. The dash has hardly got any cracks on it. I mean, it was it wasn't sitting out in the sun. It was underneath a whole bunch of trees, so it didn't get direct sunlight. I put that tack in. It's a sun tune tack. I think it cost me like five bucks out of AutoZone back in the day. Four thousand eight hundred and twenty-nine miles. Yeah, that is definitely not accurate. The floorboards look like they're almost sitting on the ground. I do remember when I was driving this, go to hit the brakes, and you have your left foot over here. You could feel the arms kicking back onto the floorboard. Probably not the safest car to drive, but it's all I had back then. The back seat, a lot of trash. Seats are actually not even torn. I don't see any tearing on the seats at all. I was very surprised. I mean, the passenger seat's got a lot of growth on it, but I don't see any tearing. I might be able to just clean these up. Door panels in really good shape. It's a lot better than I expected. Might be able to just sand these down, throw some uh, vinyl paint on them, and they'd be good to go. So let's take a look underneath the hood. Oh. Wow. So we got a lot of squirrels down there in Houston. And then I'm pretty sure that this is what was uh, living up under here. Now what scares me is at some point the carburetor was borrowed off of this. I don't know if I borrowed it, my dad borrowed it, somebody borrowed it. Probably used it for something. And then, I mean, it's been sitting covered up, the hood was on top, but there's no telling how much stuff got down there in the engine. This radiator is actually not for a Chevy Monza. I don't remember what this radiator came out of, but we had to make some custom brackets, as you can see here. All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this hood off because that is pretty floppy and it just don't want to stay up and I mean, only half of it comes up. So we're going to take the whole thing off. It's already disconnected. It's going to sit it over there and just completely out of the way. All right, I'm gonna start off by cleaning all this stuff out of here. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. We don't need that. As you can see, they actually packed it down into the intake. So, let's start cleaning it out. This will be fun. So we got it all cleaned out. I got as deep as I could get down in there. I got a screwdriver, pulled stuff out. Spark plug wires. Some of them are gone. Here's another one. It's all chewed up. So I'm gonna need a set of those or see if I can find some in the shop. Car, but I'm gonna borrow off the vet. And I noticed here, the low radiator hose is off the water pump. I don't remember doing that, but my dad might have come out there and taken it off one of the uh, really cold winters in order to dump all the water out. Didn't Couldn't afford antifreeze back in the day. It was straight water. Don't remember ever having a uh, 
cooling issue, but that definitely would have been an issue if there was. There's two chewed up wires. I found two on the Torino, so I'll be borrowing those for a little bit. And before I go any further, I'm gonna make sure that this motor ain't stuck. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply some pressure on this belt that's connected to the fan pulley and also the power steering. Separately, we had the alternator belt right here that goes down to the crankcase on the motor. So when I turn this and I see the alternator pulley turning as well as the crankcase, then I know that we're not stuck. So let's try it. And I did see it turn. All right. So I did see them both turn. So we know we don't have a stuck motor, which is awesome. Next up, I'm gonna check the oil. Right over here. Huh. So the dipstick is broken. I don't remember that. That, that is freaking awesome since I know that's had an oil leak and the dipstick is broken. So I don't know how much oil is in it or if it even has oil. <sighs> I think I'm just gonna throw a quart or two to be on the safe side until I can see it on the dipstick. And then I know for sure it's full, but I'd rather it be at over full than empty. So I'll go ahead and get that done. We'll go ahead and get those spark plug wires put on grab the carburetor off the corvette and my auxiliary gas tank and slash fuel pump and see if this thing will start up go ahead and throw this first spark plug on here Reach, please reach. There's just stuck on the brake line there. Awesome. So here's the carb off the Corvette, which was originally on the Torino. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this on here. These bolts are bottoming out, they're too, too long. So I'm gonna find some, either some shorter bolts or more likely some spacers to throw on there. All right, so I got these lug nuts that are not on anything. I think they'll make great spacers. Yep, that'll do. Now where'd I put my ratchet? Now, I don't want to tighten them too tight. I don't want to strip them out like I just stripped this one out. So, I'm gonna try this other hole. There we go, just a little snug. That stripped out really easy on that first hole. A little snug. I'm not worried about vacuum leaks or anything. I just want to get this thing running. Next. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this battery in here and hope that nothing catches on fire. This ground one, it's got some exposed wire, but that's a ground, so that's fine. Go ahead and connect the ground first. So no fires yet, no smoke. 
I'm gonna go ahead and hit the key and see if it turns over. Real quick before I try to start this up, if you're enjoying this video so far, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And while you're down there, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and enable the bell notifications so you can see more videos of me getting cars running just like this one. Absolutely nothing. I have any power at all. This is the main battery cable going from the battery to the starter. And you notice there's no end on this cable. It was barely, barely holding on. I just barely touched it and it fell off. And melted spot, melted and exposed spot. Looks like there was a melted spot here that was taped up at one point. Another melted spot. This battery is just garbage. Went down to the auto parts store. Bought a new one, 78 inches. Let's get it installed. All right, guys. So I got the new wire wired in right here. I got the uh, remote switch hooked up, and I got lowered down off the jacks. So let's see if this does a trick. All right, it's spinning over, kinda. All right, I think this might be a dead battery. Let's go ahead and hook this jumper box up here. It's not turning over very fast, I don't like that. Spin up a little faster. There we go. I don't know where all the smoke is coming from. Maybe the starter? Yep, definitely the starter. So it's not spinning very fast, but I'm going to go ahead and throw some gas in there. See if it'll start up. I am seeing sparking down there by the uh, starter. But the wires don't look like they're touching. Looks like it's coming from where the solenoid connects to the starter portion. I'm going to act like that's not even happening. Hey, get this thing started. I'm going to bring over the truck and jump start it. Give it a little extra juice. Okay, so I got it hooked up to the truck for a jump start. Let's see what it does now. That starter is just not, not happy. All right, so I went ahead and switched out the batteries. I put a bigger battery in there that barely fits. Let's see what happens now. Much better. So what you see squirting out back here in the back is oil for the oil pressure gauge. Rats chewed through the, the line for that, which is why we're not going to be driving this, but we are going to try to get started. I'm going to go ahead and hook up the uh, auxiliary tank over here so it has Plenty of gas going through it. Ah. I'm 
We'll see if I can get a clamp or something on that. There we go. So the throttle got stuck, so I instantly killed it. But it started up. Probably was not good for it to go instantly to high RPMs after for city for so long, but it did. I'm gonna see if I can put the spring in a better spot. Ah, uh, I see. I see what's going on. So what was happening is the uh, bracket that holds the accelerator pedal was twisting. So the spring was actually kind of pulling the, cell the uh, bracket this way, which in return didn't let the uh, accelerator pedal come back all the way. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and make it a tougher spring which will be fine I'd rather it be tougher than getting stuck like that guys there you have it you got to enjoy one more final little run before that motor gets retired I do have the 454 that will be going in this no I will not be using this subframe the frame for the Corvette its wheelbase and width is almost exactly the same as this Monza so since I'm going to have that extra frame once I put the body of the Corvette on the Ross speed frame I'm going to beef it up drop this monster body on top. I'll catch y'all next time.